Hi there, welcome into Beyond the Briefing. I'm JP Dice. I'm a meteorologist, corporate pilot, and flight instructor. Good to be back here on the channel. It's been a while, a couple of years, in fact. I have to share this story. And one of the reasons, one of the inspirations for me to get back on this channel, I was in New York City. I'm on the train going from White Plains, New York, in the Grand Central Terminal there in Manhattan. Guy comes up to me on the train and said, Hey, I know you, I'm thinking, maybe you watch me on TV in Birmingham. And nope, he knew me from the YouTube channel talking about aviation and weather. And he said, I, I, I love hearing about aviation and weather, keep it up. So here I am, I'm back. Last couple of years, I did leave TV full-time and I am now flying corporate full-time, flying a Citation CJ2. And I also work on TV, same station, but work part-time, about five hours a week, plus have a weather consulting business, plus I do flight instruct. I've got about six students ranging anywhere from primary to commercial instrument, all the way up to CFI. So I am staying busy. Want to talk to you, though, about a recent flight I had. Cool flight. Uh, Birmingham to Fort Worth, Texas. I had to ferry a plane with the new owner who was not multi-engine rated yet out to Fort Worth, and we were going to have some eh, kind of questionable weather. I'd been watching the weather for about five days prior to the flight, and it wasn't looking great, but it looked like it was doable. So we'll, we'll show you what we kind of went through here to uh, figure out how to make that flight and make it safely. Our weather considerations on a cross-country trip, in this case, it was Birmingham to Fort Worth. Are we going to have convective weather? There was some indications that we would see some convective weather out of this. We were trying to nail down the timing on that. We were planning the flight during mid-morning. Uh, we were going to have to leave earlier. We are going to have to delay the trip or possibly cancel the trip. All considerations with this. Number two, icing. We have ice protection on this airplane, but it is not set up to basically live in the icing. It gets you through a layer of icing. It's a TKS system. It's the, the weeping wing. It's the fluid. So good system there, but it can be overwhelmed like other icing systems. Uh, visibility at destination. Are we going to be able to uh, be good enough to get in there in terms of the minimums for the approaches. At Fort Worth, uh, they had RNAVs and ILSs, so we thought, eh, pretty good shape there. Wind, surface, and aloft. Are we going to be able to get out there without making a stop? Is it going to take a long time? So those were all considerations we had to look at. This is the airplane. Fun plane to fly. Diamond DA-62. Incredibly efficient airplane. We had plenty of fuel left when we arrived in Fort Worth. Those, those engines are just incredible. The airplane is equipped with the TKS system. It has a radar in the nose, G1000 uh, for the data link weather. So lots of good stuff in there to get you through uh, an IFR day without too much trouble, as long as you're proficient with everything. So that's the airplane. Are we going to be able to make the trip? Let's take a look and take a deep dive. So I'd been looking at everything about five days in advance, looking a lot at the GFS and the Euro, some of the models that give us a look at the longer range and the medium range. As we got closer the day before, I started looking at the high res data. What you are looking at there is the high resolution rapid refresh model. And this is a model that is so good it even ingests real-time radar data to self-correct itself. So I'm looking at the model for about the time that I'm going to be leaving on a Saturday morning. And it's showing some pretty good cells there, some rain, and there's some breaks in it as well. So it does have my attention. It is a concern, not only for the Birmingham area, but what happens when I get out to Texas? We've got rain out there, but it doesn't look like as much convective possibilities. So I think we'll have some rain. What about icing? What's going to happen uh, with the vertical profile of the atmosphere? How do we look at that? Well, you can take the forecast models. And in this particular website, one of my favorites, it's free. They have a premium version, but you can get a lot of information here free just on the, the website without paying extra. You can click on any particular area and get a vertical profile of the atmosphere. What we're looking at there is a skew T. Basics here, the red line, that is your temperature. The green line is the dew point. And we're looking from the surface all the way up through 
really to the stratosphere. So it takes us all the layers there that we'd be flying an airplane. Down at the bottom, you have the uh, temperatures in Celsius, 0, 10, 20, 30, and then minus 10, minus 20. I'm going to zoom in. I wanted to see, number one, am I going to be in clouds the entire way, and what's the temperature going to be? So at 6,000 feet, that's the, the altitude I planned for this trip based on uh, having less of a headwind there. Typically, I like to go higher, but I don't want to go higher and have 40 knots in my face. 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're 10 degrees on the plus side. That's good news. And notice how the lines are separated. We don't have the temperature and the dew point together, indicating right there at that particular location, we should have uh, really a layer of VFR weather almost. It's an IFR trip, but we're going to have the clouds on top and then the clouds at the bottom. So that's what I can determine from the skew t chart. Keep in mind what I did, I'm going to back this up a couple of times, I, I clicked on points all along the route of the trip because you don't want to find out in Jackson, Mississippi, that the weather is pretty good, but you get on farther to the west and you look at the skew T there and it's all below freezing and you're going to be in ice the entire way. So you have to really take a look at this all along your route. So this is the route. Uh, that is a screenshot from four flight from Birmingham out to Fort Worth. And the radar data there, that was actually a few hours prior to the trip. It's very important to look at the airport locations, have the flight categories turned on. I wanted to see what the options were at the different airports around the area and around the route of flight. They actually came up a good bit. They were IFR and low IFR early Saturday morning, but we had a number of those airport locations that were uh, VFR with clouds at 3,000 feet, bases at 5,000 feet. I'll tell you, a lot of this rain was actually very high based. The clouds were not sitting right on the ground. So that ended up working out real well. I'm gonna show you in just a moment what it actually looked like. I've got some pictures from the flight, but in the meantime, I'm gonna show you what I plan for and look at for a cross country flight. You need to look at those weather uh, models days in advance. The GFS and ECMWF, uh, that's the European model. Look at the forecast freezing levels. Uh, go to aviationweather.com, look at the freezing levels on your ForeFlight products. You have, go into imagery there and you'll have a number of weather products that come from the uh, Aviation Weather Center from NOAA. Also very important to look at where and wh when is the convection? Where is the convection? Is it going to be along the route of flight? Is it going to be during the time you're going to be flying? Sometimes you'll see these convective sigmets and it's not going to be during the time you're going to be flying. All right, so you may have pretty decent morning out there, but toward the afternoon, that's when the convection is going to be happening. Convection, fancy word for thunderstorms. There's a lot of up and down motion in those clouds. Those are your uh, updrafts and downdrafts, really convective storms, and if you have so many of them that you can't navigate around, it becomes a bit of a deal killer in terms of a flight. For example, if you had a long, and I say that, we've got some convection outside right now, I'm in here and I'm hearing some thunder outside. If you've got a line of thunderstorms that you are not going to be able to get on top, like most piston engine aircraft, even turbocharged piston engine aircraft, you're not going to be able to get above most of this. You're going to have to delay the trip or make some other plans to make this work out. Convective storms, no go. Can't do that. Wind surface and aloft, a lot of that's for fuel planning. You're going to have to have a stop in there because the winds are so strong. All along, the winds were about eh, 15, 10 to 15 knots in our face going out there most of the way. Surface winds at the destination, is it going to be something within your capabilities of landing the airplane? Uh, we had 8 to 10 knot winds there at Fort Worth, so not a big deal. All right, I want to show you some pictures. What did it look like once we got in the airplane? We figured out we could make this happen. I checked the weather days in advance, and we also looked at it a few hours in advance, and we saw plenty of breaks in the convective weather and also even some of the rain. There you go. This is what it looked like as we got into western Mississippi. Started seeing 
uh, the clouds above us, the clouds beneath us, kind of in the middle, we were in good shape there. And when you have active weather, I really like to stay visual on it as much as possible. It's not always possible, but if you can lay eyes on it, that's your best tool, really, is, is being able to, to see any vertical development. This is largely stratiform weather there. And what we did along the way, if we saw something that we didn't like and we couldn't deviate around, we had different airports that we had picked out. Okay, we'll land here if it doesn't work. Always have that in your back pocket. Don't push it. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. But we pressed on and everything's looking good. Here we are with the layer above, layer below, raining at the surface, but not on us at that point. I'm looking at the Sirius XM on the G1000. We'll zoom in, see uh, the area around this is Mississippi and Baton Rouge and New Orleans, kind of a blank area. There was a NEXRAD outage there. The NEXRADs are ground-based radars. So all this radar data is a mosaic of these ground-based National Weather Service radars. And when there's an outage, that's what it looks like. Fortunately for us, in the DA-62, we also had a radar on board the aircraft. So we've got a Garmin radar in the nose, and I am using this radar to navigate around some of the more intense uh, areas of precipitation. So we're going a little bit to the left there. I see some up ahead, so I'm just kind of navigating about 15 degrees off to the left-hand side of that, working with air traffic control to facilitate that. Air traffic control, also a fantastic resource. They're looking at weather information as well. They're talking to pilots that are uh, going through some of the same areas, getting reports back from them. We're giving reports to help paint a picture of what's going on there. So the weather radar, the live weather radar with the data link weather, can't beat it. It is the perfect combo. Now I realize most people do not have that luxury and the XM or the FISB is what you have. Do not use that data to navigate around individual cells. It is not that precise and it is delayed. So keep that in mind. The problem with this radar, as good as it is, in heavy rain, it can't see through it. It attenuates. The dish is small and it's not a lot of power. So with that reduced power that you have on a small radar, it just can't punch through some of that. So just keep in mind, you can't always see what's on the back side. If you're in heavy rain, this radar is going to be very limited. So keep that in mind. This is what it looked like as we're flying around. Very smooth, very stable, not a lot of bumps with this. And you can see it's now raining on us. Uh, temperatures are above freezing, so we're in good shape there. We have the TKS system if we need it. Uh, in this particular flight, we were warm enough, not a concern, but it's there in case we ran into some temperatures that were uh, between, well, really under 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, we start really looking at using that TKS system and looking outside at the wing and making sure we're not picking up any ice. Uh, it, it's really the warmer clouds. I say warmer, it's still cold, but it's not your, your minus 40s and 50s where you pick up ice. It's really that sweet spot, minus 10 plus 10, is where you could start seeing some ice. So I just want you to be aware of that. Crossing the Mississippi River, you can see we get uh, farther to the west, and it starts looking a little bit better. And then we're getting closer into uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Metroplex there. You're seeing the Class B airspace on the G1000, and now we're on the back side of all that mess. There's a, a downdraft, really a rain shaft we're seeing out there. And, and this is what I'm talking about as a good example of, if you can get a visual on what's going on, it really helps you navigate around some of this. I know some of you have done this VFR, where you get down below the clouds and you just look out there, it's like, well, I'm not gonna fly there because that's where we have a rain shaft. I'm gonna go left or right of that and stay out of it, which that's a, a good methodology too. Can't always do that, especially at night or just when the weather's so crummy you can't see anything. And we're getting, that's a Dallas Love Field there, just some pictures along the way. Of course, uh, the big D, there's DFW, and sliding on in, we're just doing some sightseeing now because it is uh, turning out to be a pretty nice day there and coming into uh, Fort Worth. So 
Hope you learned something from this. We took a, a real hard look at all of this weather before we ever launched just to make sure we would not get into a situation where we would have to uh, really land or spend the night somewhere. We're prepared to do that, but why do it looking at the data and it, it says a no-go? Go ahead, look at all that weather information, and then make the decision. And don't look at it two days prior and don't look at it again. Weather data is very, very perishable. So you need to constantly look at that information. And if you're wondering about the skew T's or interpreting some of the model data, we have some previous videos where we go over that. So you can kind of revisit that and get an idea of what you're looking at. Some of the basics, if you're looking out four or five days, uh, Euro, GFS, if you're looking at a short term, HRRR is my go-to. It's a high resolution model. Also, the three kilometer NAM is a great resource as well. Pivotalweather.com is a good website for that model data. Hope you have a great time flying out there. Be safe. Don't fly into any nasty weather. Always have a good resource of weather data. Uh, just because it looks okay where you are doesn't mean where you may be going. That weather along that route could turn pretty ugly. And our purpose here on these videos is to educate folks about weather, reduce the number of weather-related accidents, help you out with weather during your check rides. That's going to be some of our upcoming videos. We're going to revisit check ride weather. We'll be talking about that. In the meantime, be safe. Have any questions, hit me up. I'm JP Dice. Safe flying.